सो इन दिस सेकेंड वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू कवर द शॉर्ट ओवरव्यू ऑफ दिस न्यू स्टैंडर्ड दैट इज आई एस ओ वन फाइव वन एट नाइन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू सो टू बिगिन विथ दिस वी आर गोइंग टू सी अ शॉर्ट इंट्रोडक्शन सो एज ऑल ऑफ दस हैज ऑलरेडी अंडर गॉन द ट्रेनिंग ऑफ आई एस ओ वन फाइव एट नाइन सीज आई एम कंसिडरिंग दैट यू हैव अंडर गॉन द ट्रेनिंग एंड इवन इफ यू हैव नॉट अंडर गॉन दिस ट्रेनिंग यू माइट अंडर गो दिस ट्रेनिंग एज इट इज अ मैंडेटरी रिक्वायरमेंट मे बी इन अ डिसेंट फ्यूचर यू विल अटेंड दिस कोर्स एंड अटेंड दिस ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम सो यू विल गेट द कम्प्लीट इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ दिस स्टैंडर्ड सो इन दिस वेबिनार आई एम जस्ट गोइंग टू कवर अ शॉर्ट इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ दिस स्टैंडर्ड सो नाउ हियर आई हैव पुट अ स्क्रीन शॉट विच इज बेसिकली अ स्टैंडर्ड वॉट वी आर गोइंग आर वॉट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट इट इज अ इंटरनेशनल स्टैंडर्ड ISO 15189 Medical Laboratories Requirement for Quality and Competence, and it has been fourth edition, which was launched in December 2020. So, 22. So, this is the standard about which what we are talking and how we are going to implement this new standard in our medical laboratory. So, to see these objectives of this document. what are the objectives of this document how this document are what is the usefulness of this document so first of all this document or this standard will be useful to promote the welfare of the patient so whatever basically we are going to implement the management systems order procedures processes we are going to implement in our laboratory all are diverted or are are directed towards the promotion of welfare of the patient next we are going to plan and implement actions to address risk and opportunities for improvement so basically this standard is more of patient safety related and has more focus on patient health care and with this we have to address what are the risk associated with the processes and policies of your laboratories how to identify those risks and how to eliminate those risks then also next aspect is opportunities for improvement you have to find out what are the opportunities for improvement you have to identify those opportunity and you have to use those opportunities to improve your services next is this standard will be useful for the increasing the effective of the management system so whatever management systems you have placed in your laboratories with this use of this standard you can increase the effectiveness of those management system and you can decrease the probability of invalid result next part our objective of this document is it will help to reduce the harms to the patient laboratory personnel and the public and the environment so basically here we are not going to focus only on the test results we are going to also focus on the reducing harm to the patient laboratory personnel general public and the your environment so it has also covered the aspect of environmental management system with this standard you are going to compare your patient examination result between medical laboratories regardless of the boundaries of the city or country so wherever you are conducting the examination procedure or wherever you are conducting the examination test this will be having a comparable result all over the world or across the city or across the Country. So basically, these are the main objectives of this document. So now, one more aspect of this document is it can be applicable not only to medical laboratories, but it is applicable to diagnostic imaging, respiratory therapy, physiological sciences, blood banks, and transfusion services. So these are some of the additional feature of this standard. this standard also facilitates cooperation between medical laboratories and other healthcare services as we have seen it is not limited only to medical laboratories it is also applicable to respiratory therapies 
blood bank imaging the uh, imaging modalities so it will have a basically a harmony between all the facilities with respect to the healthcare facilities so basically if you want to have a appropriate diagnosis of a tuberculosis so you can have a diagnostic modality which is lab and uh, imaging services you can get it accredited so that you have a complete diagnostic setup for your tuberculosis as well as the respiratory therapy which can be used in the management of tuberculosis patient you can also get accredited for your respiratory therapy so it will become a complete accredited setup where you will have a diagnostic cascade of laboratory and imaging as well as the patient management cascade with respect to the respiratory therapy so this is the additional benefit of this new standard so now to see what are the different aspect of this standard or what are the different focus areas of this standard so this standard has given emphasis on risk management as per the iso standard 22367 it has also given a uh, importance to the laboratory safety as we have seen safety for not only for the patient but also to the laboratory staff and the visitor who are visiting your laboratory as per the iso standard iso 15190 it has also taken emphasis on sample collection and transportation system with respect to the iso 20658 the format of this document is as per the iso 17025 2017 so this which is a specific standard for testing and calibration laboratory so the format of this standard or the structure of this standard is as per the iso 15170252017 2017 and finally it has also included the requirement of point of care testing facility basically if any of you are aware there was a separate dedicated standard for iso 22870 which was included for point of care testing facilities or which were mentioning requirement for point of care testing facilities now with this new standard this standard iso 22870 has also been withdrawn and you can implement the same management system to your point of care testing facility also as per the iso 15189 so these are some of the major implications of this standard now we are going to see a brief overview of this standard that what are the different section as all of you was are aware the previous standard iso 15189 name 2012 has five main clauses but here with this new standard we have eight sections where the section 1 section 2 and section 3 remains the same with respect to the scope normative references and section 3 is with respect to the terms and definitions so all these three sections remains the same as per or similar to the previous standard the section 4 there is a change which is addressing here the general requirement and which mainly addresses the impartiality of the laboratory personnel as well as the impartiality of the laboratory activities so your laboratory personnel as well as the activities whichever you are do performing in your laboratory it must be performed in a impartial way then there is a clause on confidentiality where you are going to maintain a complete confidentiality and privacy of the information with respect to the patient then we uh, clause 4.3 also talk about the patient rights safety and well being so these are the general requirement in this standard then we have clause 5 which mentions with respect to the structural and governance requirement which include the legal accountability that is legal identity and legal registration of your laboratory then we have laboratory director responsibility uh, then we have laboratory director job description uh, the responsibilities of the laboratory director the competence of the laboratory director 
then we have management structure for ensuring the quality management and in class 5 we also have objectives policies and also a emphasis on risk management system in a laboratory then we have class 6 we spoke about the resources which have human resources including recruitment training and professional development then we have laboratory facilities that is infrastructure of your laboratory then we have resources in terms of equipment calibration meteorological traceability then we have resources with respect to the service agreement with respect to the point of care testing and referral services as point of care testing services are included in this new standard we have a resource requirement with respect to the point of care testing which is also included in this standard then we have clause 7 which is process requirement where there are pre-examination processes examination post processes post examination processes and we have process related to the handling non-conformance event process related to complaint handling process related to data maintenance processes related to the emergency preparedness of your laboratory so this was class 7 and then we have class 8 which includes the management system responsibilities related to the management system policies and objectives of management system risk management in your management system audit corrective actions continual improvement plan and regular management system review meeting so this was a overview of your iso 15189 2022 so within a brief period or within a five six slides we have just understood what is the iso 15189 2022 or what is the structure of this iso 15189 2000 in the next video we will be seeing about what are the important aspect of this new standard iso 15189 2022 with respect to the medical laboratory till then keep following and thank you